In today's short but sweet podcast episode, we're gonna be getting up to speed with the Felix for Fall Knit Along. I'm gonna be sharing with you my own Felix pullover work in progress. I also have a frivolous cast on that is being knit right now in a surprisingly lovely yarn from a budget supplier. And at the very end of the episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you a new to me yarn that is local to Nevada. So grab your project, a cup of something cozy, and let's get started. <music> Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 62 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily dedicated to knitting, though I do get up to other fiber related topics from time to time. I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is located just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada in the Southwest United States. It's where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, my seven-year-old son, Angus, my four-year-old son, Ronan, my cat, Oscar, and our dog, Pepper. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm really excited to be here with you today. If you are a new subscriber or viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber or viewer, welcome back. I have a little bit to share with you guys today, but it is going to be a pretty fast episode. And before I get into all of that, I wanna do a little ad mini uh, kind of update, if you will. Fiber for the People, my hand dyed yarn company has had a shop update. The update was on Saturday. The shop is selling out really quickly. There's not a lot left in terms of inventory at this very moment, but I wanna update you on the next shop update for Fiber for the People, which is going to be Saturday, November 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All the details for Fiber for the People are down below in the description box. You can head over to either Instagram or the website to learn more. Sign up for the newsletter so you can be notified anytime I have a shop update or to stay on top of all things Fiber for the People. Also, based on the really popular, unpopular knitting opinions video from two weeks ago, I want to say, I had shirts made to kind of represent our partiality towards toe up or cuff down socks. So today I am sporting my um, support for cuff down sock knitting because it's really the only sock knitting I've done. But cuff down and toe up t-shirts are in the merch shop now. You can find that by going to the link in the description box for the wool needles hands merch.com shop. You can find not only this, a lot of other clever t-shirts that embrace this fibery craft that we love so much and a few other things over there as well. So if you want to support the channel, it's a great way to do it. Head over to wool needles hands merch.com or you can just click the link down below in the description box. It means so much to me, all of you who have gone over and purchased a mug or a t-shirt or a bag or what have you to show your support for the channel. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. Thank you so much. There's lots of cute stuff over there. So head over and give it a look. Okay. And last, but certainly not least in terms of ad mini stuff, I want to share with you guys some of the works in progress and finished objects coming out of the Felix for fall knit along that we are hosting here on the channel and over on Instagram and the Ravelry page for the podcast channel as well. Those are all of the places where you can kind of get involved in this knit along. We are knitting either Felix pullovers or Felix cardigans by Amy Christophers of Savory Knitting. Also too, just a side note, this knit along is not ending at the end of this month. We're taking this through to December. So if you're just getting in, uh, becoming aware of this knit along and you wanna jump in, you have plenty of time to knit yourself either a pullover or a cardigan um, of the Felix design collection. So please get involved if you're interested because you have plenty of time and we would love to have you. All right, without further ado, let's take a look at the really lovely projects that are coming out of the Felix for Fall knit along. <music> that didn't just completely inspire you to cast on your own Felix, I don't know what will because you guys, the projects coming out of this knit along are so lovely and inspiring. Your design modifications, your yarn choices, seeing all the cardigans. Um, I had not seen this many examples of the cardigan knit and it's just so lovely. So thank you guys so much for participating and sharing your work. It means so much to me and the community that we have here at the Wool Needles Hands channel. It's so inspiring. Keep them coming you guys and you definitely have time to get involved. So please do 
like I said, we would love to have you. Okay, you guys, I'm ready to get into it. Like I said, this is going to be a short episode, I think. I haven't recorded it all yet, so we shall see. It has been a very busy week. We've had Halloween activities all week. We were out of town last weekend, um, and I am the chairperson for the fundraising, um, I should rephrase that. I am the fundraising chairperson on my son's elementary school's PTO, which is the same as a PTA. Um, yeah, but that's a position that I hold and it is very um, time consuming and there's a lot involved with it. I'm just second guessing whether or not I'm gonna do it again next year. I'm gonna stay on the PTO, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna hold that position because it's just, it's a lot. But we had a big trunk or treat Halloween festival this week at my son's school. And it was huge. Um, not only did we organize food, we also had three food trucks. There were so many people participating to host trunks and decorate their trunks and have the people um, walk through. There were games and activities and dancing and a DJ. It was wild um, for an elementary school in a really small, quiet neighborhood. I think everybody in the neighborhood kind of heard it was going on and just came whether they went to the school or not. Um, but it was really awesome. I think we had over a thousand people show up. Crazy sauce. There was a pumpkin decorating contest, which was another thing that we kind of got up to this week was helping my son um, decorate his Pete the Cat pumpkin. And I'll pop a picture up here so you can see it. It was his idea um, to do a Pete the Cat inspired pumpkin. He's in second grade and the pumpkins had to be decorated like a book character and he loves Pete the Cat. So he came up with the design and we put it together and um, he didn't win the pumpkin decorating contest, but we got to bring the pumpkin home. But it's been like one of those just festive holiday crafts, all these things all week. And I feel like I'm kind of batty, no pun intended. But at the end of the week, I'm just like, oh my gosh, what happened to this week? It's been crazy. So I have a little bit to share with you guys and I'm excited to share that with you guys. Um, but before, as always, uh, do you ever watch me talk and wonder if the cup is gonna go like this and all the coffee's gonna pour out? Sometimes I look down after gabbing and I notice my cup is starting to go like this. One of these days, you guys, I'm calling it. Coffee for today because um, we're having my parents over tonight to celebrate my mom's birthday. I have a roast going right now. I have beans simmering on the stove right now. It's just so many lovely smells in here. Um, so I need this coffee to keep me going, you guys. I just, I need it. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm drinking. Okay, anything before we get started? Oh, yes. I am wearing, um, and I know that I wear a lot of store-bought cardigans. If you have watched any of the previous videos and have asked about the cardigans that I am wearing, there is a very good chance, I'm pulling up the pattern information about this project, there is a very good chance that those are store-bought cardigans because actually they are store-bought cardigans because other than this, I've never knit a cardigan. And I feel like this one, I mean, it counts, but it's, I don't know. It's not like a traditional cardigan, and I'll tell you more about it in a second. But um, but yeah, most of the cardigans that I wear are store-bought. And I need to start just linking to them down below in the description box, even if they're store-bought. Because, I mean, who doesn't love a nice, you know, inexpensive but super wearable store-bought cardigan that you know you're going to just, like, wear the bejesus out of? So I can start linking to those down in the bottom if you'd like. Okay, this is called the Kinnikin Cardigan. I um, knit this back in 2020. No, I didn't. No, it couldn't have been. Yes, it was 2020 because it was right before like all the, you know what, hit the fan with COVID. And it was right before I went to Stitches West. Um, I had finished this. I remember being at Stitches West wearing this, learning about all the COVID stuff going on. It was crazy. Um, not a great like episodic memory to attach to this cardigan. So I apologize for that. Okay, this is a design by Goodnight Day, but she specializes in like really kind of bulky yet drapey designs, not like super bulky unwearable designs. She has some in there that are a little like kind of avant-garde and really big and bulky, but typically most of her designs are nice and drapey. She has a loose fabric despite the really bulky yarn. So everything is pretty wearable, which is what I really love about her bulky weight designs. Um, you know, as opposed to some of the others that I find to not be very wearable because we had this conversation with the Unpopular Knitting Opinions video that super bulky stuff is just not that wearable. I would say that um, Goodnight Day designs kind of challenge your perception of that a little bit. And this is one of those. So it's again, it's called the Kinnikin Cardigan. It's super bulky. I knit this using a strand of my Merino bulky yarn by Fiber for the People and two strands of mohair and then the collar to give it this like rigid structure. It's kind of, 
me see if I can. You can see that this is a little bit more rigid than the rest of the fabric, and that's because this is two strands of that bulky weight yarn held together with the mohair, so it kind of tightens it up a little bit. Super comfortable, it's not too hot, it doesn't like, you don't get cold wearing it, it's warm enough to keep you warm, but it's not so stifling that it makes you feel hot. So, yeah, that's this. This is my Kinnikin cardigan, loving it. Like I said, it's fiber, fiber for the people yarn, which is um, my yarn that I dye and sell fiberforthepeople.com, you can check it out. This is the whimsy colorway as the base yarn and then the mohair over the top of that is the saffron, um, which is a signature solid colorway over the top of that. So it's really cool. Okay, so that is what I'm wearing. Finally, a hand knit cardigan. All of these store-bought cardigans really beg the question, when are you gonna knit yourself a cardigan? I mean, I have the capability, I can do it. And I think that might be coming soon. And the yarn that I'm gonna share with you guys at the end of the episode might be the yarn for that. We shall see. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. I wanna share with you guys. Um, now, no going forward, this one cast on I'm about to share with you was frivolous. Not necessarily, well, yeah, unplanned, so spontaneous. How about we say that? Um, I have no business casting on another sweater. I have two raglan sweaters on the needles like going right now, and I have plans for another, and then, you know, even that cardigan I just mentioned. So this is just something, it was like one of those, I just, I just wanna see, I just wanna see. <laughs> I'm, I love this yarn, I just wanna see what it'll look like. So I apologize, I know it's, it's frivolous, but I can't, it can't be helped. Before I tell you what this is, actually I'm just gonna set this down for a second right here because we'll talk about the yarn first. Okay. There you go, stay there. In the episode, uh, one of the mid midweek rambles where I shared with you my top five favorite knits, I talked to you guys about my fire pit mitts and my favorite pair of fire pit mitts are knit using Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. Ever since sharing that video, I have heard from so many folks how much they love Lion Brand's Fisherman's Wool or how they didn't know about it and are amazed at how great it is because they recently went to the store and picked up a few balls or what have you. And I love that, I really do, because I truly love Lion Brand's Fisherman's, or Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. I think it's a fantastic yarn, and to see so many of you folks out there kind of appreciating it as well, based on that brief section of that video, just, it really makes my day, because it is a very affordable yarn, and the balls of the yarn, I mean, are generous in terms of yardage. So, that is what this is. So this is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool, I picked this up at Joann's. Each ball of this is $13.99 and it gives you, it's a worsted weight yarn. This is a tweed. So you can see um, all the little tweed flecks going on in there. Oh, how pretty is that you guys? And I'm gonna show it knit, up, knit it up in just a second. Um, this is a tweed and this is 348 yards, 170 grams. It's 90% wool and that's going to be the majority of your yarn there. And then the, all those little flecks and nip, nibs that you see in there, um, they call those um, nips. Almost positive. That's 7% acrylic and 3% viscose. But it is untreated, really, really um, rich in that natural lanolin and natural oils from the wool yarn. It's Gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Um, here, I'll slip this off. And you can see it's rustic. It has a rustic hand, but it's not too scratchy. It kind of reminds you of like an Icelandic wool in terms of how it feels in the hand. And I know some people at first feel might think that that is just too scratchy, but if you've knit with Icelandic yarn before, you know that it feels like that up until the point that you create fabric with it. And there's something about this like, I don't know what it is exactly, but once you get a fabric and all the stitches kind of get in place and you work with it, you realize like this isn't really as prickly as you were imagining, it actually is quite lovely. And that's what this is, it's very similar to that. But you guys, it's a fantastic yarn if you want something nice and rustic and earthy. It doesn't come in a huge variety of colors. I wanna say it only comes in five colors. It has like a natural brown color, a cr like a cream color, which is this without the little tweeds in there. This, it has another tweed, which is more kind of like a zebra stripe tweed. And then it has, um, oh, you know what? I actually have one of the colors, just like. Okay, this is one that I purchased a long time ago. Actually, the label is a little bit different now. You can kind of see. 
There's like a different label there. But this is also Lion Brand, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. Really cool. And it's just this like oatmeal color. And I'm not, I'm not kidding you guys. When you squish this, if you get your hands in there like this, you can feel the oils, like the lanolin and the oils from the spinning, like the spinning oils, but the natural lanolin from the wool, it's in there and it's so lovely. So the label actually says um, on this older label, Fisherman's Wool, perfect for knitting and crochet, 100% pure virgin wool containing natural oils. This one, this is the single color, it's called, um, I don't know if this one has a color name. Oatmeal, yeah. Um, it's color 123, oatmeal. And it says, oops, oops, oops. There we are, 465 yards. So the solid color is 465 yards of worsted weight yarn for $13.99. And you guys, the yarn is really lovely. Like I was gonna see if I can pull a couple of strands so you can see it a little better. It's so nice and it's, it's bouncy. It's got a really cool natural halo. It's just great. So anyway, needless to say, I'm gonna set this one down. I have something started in my Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. I'm gonna set this here. Okay, and I wanna share that with you guys. Oops. Now, again, I don't need to be casting anything on. I really don't, um, but I just, I couldn't help it. So this is just, the top or the beginnings of a yoke for a raglan sweater. It's very little because I spent most of the time so far creating this collar, this neckband. Um, it's doubled. You can see how squishy that is. Ugh. I just knit double length and then folded it over and knit all of the stitches together so it kind of creates that rolled neckband. And actually, here, let me take this off for just a moment. And I'm gonna throw this on so you can see what it looks like so far. Hold on. Okay, here we are. So pardon me as I scooch forward here. Yeah, so this is just going to be a raglan pullover. I can't really see the seams in the camera screen, but look at how pretty, you guys. Look at this lovely tweed fabric. And it's, it feels so nice. It doesn't feel scratchy. Of course, I mean, it's not next to my skin down here, um, but it feels so great. I love this rolled neck. So pretty. Okay, so that's what I cast it on and kind of started tinkering with. So let's talk a little bit about this. What exactly is the pattern, Taylor? Where is all of this coming from? This spontaneous cast on that I'm tantalizing y'all with. This is kind of a Frankenstein pattern because I am pulling from, I'm not writing a pattern. I'm not going to write this and sell it. If I do anything, I will just tell you what I did and just give it to you because I'm not right now interested in designing a sweater and selling a pattern. It's just not, it's not in my wheelhouse, nor do I have time. But what I can do is I can pick and choose from sweater patterns that I really love and do little things from each um, to create something, you know, improvised, if you will. So I used the um, cast on and in terms of like my stitch count and the neckline of my Magnolia Bloom sweater. So you, I've shared my Magnolia Bloom sweater. It's that green, beautiful green with that lacy bobbly design up here. I took the neckline from that, just the neckline. I didn't take anything from the yoke, obviously, cause it's not gonna have a pattern. I just took this kind of neckline design. And then I incorporated the short row shaping of the Felix pullover because I love her short row shaping. It's really easy and intuitive. The only thing from the Felix that I didn't include were the eyelets down the raglan seams. So I'm including the short row shaping from the Felix and the raglan um, stitch counts in terms of how many uh, shoulder stitches that you have to how many front and back stitches that you have. And instead of doing the eyelets, I just did a basic knit through the front and back on either side of the marker for my raglans. And you can kind of see that here. Um, you can see those raglans, just very simple raglan seams. I didn't even, I'm not even worried about whether they're left leaning or right leaning. I just did knit through the front and back, slip my marker, knit through the front and back, just to do a quick and dirty 
raglan seam because I think it's fine. I think this yarn is busy enough and it creates a very simple raglan sleeve, uh, seam that you really don't have to fuss too much about which way they're leaning. Um, yeah, so, and I've done that on my, okay, the, mo the most recent video that I published, I was wearing a Felix pullover knit in uh, Platalope and uh, Fiber for the People mohair. And this, I did the same thing on that one. I just did knit through the front and back on either side of the stitch marker and created very simple raglan sle uh, seams and it worked out beautifully. And that's what I'm doing here. I, I have this really annoying spot though right here. Can you see that? I think I did something with my wrap and turn that I wasn't supposed to. But what's beautiful about this Tweety yarn is it's very forgiving in terms of little mistakes like that. Yeah. So that's what I have going so far. My plan is to carry on um, increasing at my raglan seams as per the Felix pullover pattern. And then once I've done that, I'm going to separate for sleeves. And instead of continuing as a Felix pullover, I'm gonna do some shaping similar to my no frills pullover by Petite Knit um, on the body. And then I'm going to put, <sighs> possibly just do plain sleeves with no shaping and then do like a rapid decrease at the bottom to give it a little bit of a balloon. I don't, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna do that, but we shall see. So this is just an improvised as I go top down raglan in Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. I'm calling this my Fisherman's Raglan because that's, I mean, the wool and it's just a basic raglan. And again, I am putting this together piecemeal from patterns that I've knit before in the past. Um, when I get done and I kind of, as I've taken notes of what I'm doing with this, I will share those with you if you're interested in trying, but I'm not going to change sizes. I'm not gonna make that kind of a modification, but I do have a video and I'll link to it here that tells you how to adjust your sizes um, based on your needle of choice and you know, all of that yarn of choice. So you can look at that if you're interested in that. But otherwise I will just give you kind of the basic rundown of what I'm doing here. But yeah, I love it so far. I think it's fun. I have been spending some time working on this as you can see, so it's taken away from some other things, but even so it's just fleeting moments this week. But that is Fisherman's Wool by Lion Brand being knit into a really cozy raglan pullover. That is it. That's my first little share for today. Um, it's a work in progress, but again, there's no deadline with this. There's not really a deadline with any of my projects, but this is just more kind of something fun that I'm playing around with. Like I said, I'm working on a piecemeal pulling from different patterns. So it's really not something that I can just go pick up and follow a pattern. I have to kind of have some planning ahead going on, but I am having a lot of fun with that. And I think that that fabric that that yarn creates is just going to be so wearable. So I hope it is something that I can work through pretty quickly and I think it will be. Okay, so next in um, as we speak about the Felix for fall knit along, let's go ahead and share my Felix. I have not made a ton of progress. I, I wish I had made more, but I was distracted. What are you gonna do? Um, but this is what I have so far. So I have finished the body of the sweater. So I'm done. I've done my hemline. So I've got a nice deep hemline there. It's somewhat, cr not cropped, but it's not long. I feel like when I'm wearing jeans, it's gonna come right, right above the like waistband of the jeans, which is good. I kind of like that, um, but yeah, it's cozy. So off of Body Island and I'm, and I'm on to Sleeve Island. I just stuck the needle in there and started today. And it's funny because once you put the needle in for the sleeves, after all of the body island that you've been on, those really long rounds, and then you get your needle into the sleeves, you realize like how much faster it's going to be from that point out, just because it's a small circumference. And there's some shaping too, so you're gonna be decreasing as you go. So, Felix Pullover. This is Fiber for the People yarn in the Yucca colorway paired with mohair over the top in um, a one-of-a-kind colorway that's a little bit more of a brown than the Yucca. I have both of them here. So this, this is the Yucca colorway. More um, green forward than brown. And then this is the mohair that I'm pairing it with, which is definitely more of a brown color. It's really pretty. So the two of them together kind of make a really lovely earthy brown fabric. And I like the variations that you see from the mohair. It's really pretty. I'm not alternating skeins. I'm just not one to do that typically. 
And I think having like a mohair paired with it really helps make that not as necessary, but it's, it seems to be working. So that's good news. Okay. So that is my Felix pullover and I'm happy with it. And I'm super happy to be onto the sleeves because that means we are on the road to the end. And it'll be nice to have that sweater for the cold weather that's coming. Okay. Last thing I would like to chat with you guys about, and I was going to save this for a separate video. And I still think I'm going to be doing a separate video about this. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to share it with you guys today because I'm so excited and it just came in the mail and I, it's hard to hold all that like enthusiasm in when you have a new yarn acquisition and you just want to share it with everybody. So I'm going to share it with you guys. This is a sweaters quantity or a sweat. Yeah. Sweaters quantity of yarn from, this is called lovely Valley wool. It is from sheep from Northern Nevada. I live in Southern Nevada near Las Vegas. And this comes from the Basque region of Northern Nevada. And oh, it's so lovely. You guys, I mean, okay, let's just, I'm going to let you go ahead and have a first glance. This yarn is not tweed. Um, it's, but what you're seeing, those little flecks, all of those little white flecks, that's hay. So there's hay stuck in the yarn. And that kind of thing to me is just so cool. I love that. I like those little reminders of where your yarn came from, the sheep, the, the farm, all of that. I like the seeing those little reminders in the yarn. I mean, and some of them are pretty substantial. So of course you're probably going to want to pick some of them out as you're knitting or maybe not. Cause it's like little, little treats. Even my, even my lion brand fisherman's wool has the hay like still stuck in the yarn, which is cool. Okay. So 100% American Rambouillet comes from Northern Nevada from the happy, excuse me, the lovely Valley wool company. So on the label, it says this is an all American product from the family and friends of lovely Valley wool. Together. We are on a quest to support local and sustainable agriculture. Sheep are raised on the Duff arena ranch in Northern Nevada. And the wool is milled by mountain meadow in Buffalo, Wyoming. Okay. How did I hear about this yarn? What's the deal? My mom owns a big piece of property up in Winnemucca, Nevada. Winnemucca is a town in very, I would say it's about 45 minutes to an hour south of the Idaho border in Northern Nevada. We have um, some friends up there. My mom is, has very close friends up there who are close friends with the Deferinas. I have plans on not only going back to meet them, but hopefully to tour their farm up in Northern Nevada and share that here with you guys. So that's all kind of coming. I'm, I'm in the process of working that out. This wool is used for yarn, which is used for weaving. And if you go to their website, you can see they have the most beautiful woven blankets and then they happen to sell the yarn in addition to that. So a little bit about lovely Valley wool. It was created to support sustainable agriculture and the relationships that it forges for our love of the land, the livestock and each other. They're a hundred percent grown and American made. Lovely Valley is the summer range where our sheep grow soft, beautiful wool. And then their mill is mountain meadow wool in Buffalo, Wyoming. They do all the custom processing. They wash the fleeces and they spin it into a two ply sport weight yarn, which is what we have here. And this yarn is really just super fabulous. It feels so nice and springy and the color is really lovely. They don't, um, I mean, it's not dyed yarn. This is all natural colors. And so you get a real small variety of colors, but it's the same, like what I was talking about with the lion brand fisherman's wool, that's kind of part of, you know, purchasing a yarn like that is you're limiting yourself to what's available naturally. And I think that that's kind of cool occasionally to give yourself that limitation. Um, it cleanses the color palette every once in a while. Okay. So this is something I do have plans for. I would love this to become a cardigan. Um, it's so special. Yeah. I really, I'm just looking at it. It's giving me all the feels right now. That is lovely Valley wool. Please check them out. If you are in the region, in the area, um, maybe purchase a skein or two to support the company. It's really cool to find these locally sourced yarns. And this may be one that is new to you that you haven't heard about. And like I said, I do hope to do more with this, um, company with their farm and see if I can get in touch through some contacts that I have up in Northern Nevada to see if I can learn more in person about lovely Valley wool. So we shall see. All right, guys, that's all I have time for today. I have a pot of beans stewing on the stove and a roast that I need to tend to. It has been lovely taking a pause for my day to chat with you guys. I enjoyed that so much. Actually, I, I think that was more, um, kind of involved in a good way, like a little bit more 
fulfilling than I expected it to be seeing as I haven't gotten a whole lot done this week. So I appreciate you being here. It's been so nice. I hope you guys have a lovely Halloween. Until I see you guys on Wednesday for the midweek ramble, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you are doing. Be well, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.